Let's go uh, to Jack Cafferty. He's got the Cafferty file. Jack. President Obama's $3 trillion debt reduction plan is really a huge tax increase accompanied by very small and somewhat questionable spending cuts. The president wants $3 in tax increases for every dollar in spending cuts. That's according to analysis done by the Washington Times. His plan will go nowhere in Congress. Besides the $1.5 trillion in new taxes, here are the president's ideas of spending cuts. Find waste in Medicare. Where have we heard that before? Count savings from winding down the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. It was going to happen anyway. Count lower interest costs on the national debt. Where are the cuts? No entitlement reform in this plan. No orders to cut the federal workforce, to cut federal budgets by a significant amount, or to close overseas military bases. No means test for Social Security. No raising of the retirement age. Nothing. Meanwhile, as we wait for the so-called super committee in Congress to come up with their plan, the deficit situation is a ticking time bomb. Here's the scary truth. Even if the super committee comes up with $1.5 trillion in deficit cuts over the next decade, it is a minuscule drop in the bucket. Our country is more than $14 trillion in debt right now, and we are adding to that debt at the staggering rate of a trillion dollars plus every year. So even if the government cuts three or four trillion dollars over ten years, we're still going to have a national debt of 21 trillion dollars in ten years. Seven trillion more than we have right now. The federal government knows all this full well and simply refuses to be realistic about how dangerous our predicament is. So here's the question. Is anyone besides Ron Paul serious about our deepening national financial crisis? Go to CNN.com slash Cafferty file and post a comment on my blog, or go to our post on the Situation Room's Facebook page. Let's get right back to Jack for the Cafferty file. Jack. Question this hour, is anyone besides Ron Paul serious about this nation's deepening financial crisis? Rich writes from Florida, no, no one. It's not popular to deliver the truth, particularly when it's bad news. As a result, none of the others are going to do it, and Dr. Paul won't be elected by trying to. Too many people are willfully ignorant or else benefiting from the status quo. Hate to be so downbeat, but it is what it is. Steve writes, you've got to be kidding. Ron Paul wants to dissolve the Federal Reserve. Probably would like to go back to the gold standard and the late 1890s, for that matter. His ideas are worse than those of the Bush-Cheney administration that caused this mess. John on Facebook, not only are the other candidates not serious about our financial problems, they are oblivious. Ron Paul's the only candidate who understands the business cycle and our monetary system and why we have the problems that we do. Dr. Paul's been right for 30 years on this. We no longer have time not to listen to him. Carla writes, I don't think he's serious about anything but his own self-interest. I can't take anyone in the race seriously who doesn't support heavy taxes on the wealthy and big corporations and closing tax loopholes. If they don't want to tax the wealthy and they don't want to tax big business, then they have to have an ulterior motive. And H.J. writes from St. Paul, I want Social Security. I want health care when I'm old and no longer have a job. I want them to raise taxes on me now so I have a huge fund saved up by the time I retire. Stop talking about cutting. I want those things. Taxes have to be higher. Those Republicans want to eliminate the entire social safety net. You don't like taxes? Fine. Go live in Nigeria and make $2 a day. If you want to read more on this, obviously people have strong feelings, you go to my blog, cnn.com slash Cafferty File, or through our post on the Situation Room's Facebook page.